Hello readers, I'm Amy and I'm your nonfiction feminist. Today I am reviewing Little Women, the book, the original material here. There have been several movies made, apparently several TV shows and stuff as well. I have not seen a new movie yet. I really want to because I love pretty much everyone who is acting in the movie. But here we are starting with the source material and hey, I actually remember to put a book in the background for once. I'm going to structure this like I usually do with my reviews and I will start with premise, then move on to plot, world building, and finish off with character. So premise of the book, we're following four sisters from childhood to womanhood, which essentially means from, I think Amy is 12 at the beginning of the book and Meg is 16, 17, 16, I think. So not like childhood, childhood, but young womanhood into adulthood. Plot, plot is where it gets interesting. There's not really a set plot to this. Each character kind of has their own arc, but this is a reread for me. I've read this book five or six times before. Um, I think both the original version as well as the great illustrated classics version whenever I was growing up, and I could never remember what happens. I remember Beth, kind of hard to forget. And I remember Lori and how crazy he was, but I could never remember like what happened in this book? What story was it trying to tell? And I figured it out. The reason that I can't remember anything that happens in this book is because it's episodic in its writing. Like I said, there is an overarching storyline for each of the characters. They're characters each have a place to go. They have things that repeat throughout each chapter, but each chapter has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like, you'll have an event start in the chapter and a lot of the events end in that chapter. It's very episodic. It's almost like a well-flowing series of short stories in an almost 500 page book. That's why I can never remember anything because there's a lot of little stuff that goes on from chapter to chapter. Very, very episodic. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the plot. It's, it's documenting their personal growth, which is pretty much the same thing that I said in the premise. World building. This book is very heavy on the morality and the values and the teaching lessons. Um, it is essentially teaching women how to be better prepared for life and how to be better prepared for marriage. Um, it's about building your own values and holding yourself to those values and looking at the person that you're in love with and do your values match? Will you have moods that work well together. You have a lot of these sisters kind of breaking tradition by following their personal values. So you have Joe who doesn't want to get married at all. Um, when Meg does eventually move on to marriage, she does a very personal wedding. She doesn't do the whole shebang. She does this small thing at home and she interacts with the groom before the wedding, which Aunt March is just cannot believe that this is happening. How are you shirking tradition? It discusses wanting and learning how to not want and you have like an incident with Meg where she really wants this material and she buys it even though they can't afford it and then she sees her husband has to return the coat that he got. Stuff like that. It, it goes into finances and personal values and kind of social morals with Joe's sensation stories that she eventually ends up writing. A lot of morality and value stuff, which it was it was interesting. The stories were still interesting. This book was still really enjoyable. But with all the morality and values being thrown at the audience and pushed on the audience, like it kind of felt like too much at times. Like it was getting too traditional for my taste. But I mean, this book was written in 1880. It's a classic. It's also very family and relationships centered, especially family, and about finding yourself in your family and being there for your family and helping each other stand up um, or prop each other up when they need a helping hand. And then we have the characters. So Meg is the eldest. She's kind of the domestic. She's 
the responsible elder sister who tries to follow society's rules for her, sometimes to her detriment because she wants all the pretty dresses that she can't afford. Joe is the writer. If you've heard anything about Little Women, you've heard about Joe. She's like the main character in most of the movies. She's the one that people really kind of focus on and get themselves attached to because she's very independent. She's very much her own person. She shirks society's values and she's often called Sun Joe or Boy Joe um, because she's very boyish in that she sees the problems of being a woman in society. <laughs> Beth is the musical, sensitive, and shy one. She's not looked at as much as the other sisters because she's like the most adult in her morals and her values. Um, she's very sweet. She doesn't really present any problems with the family. She doesn't really clash with anyone's personalities. She's the, she's the baby of the family, even though Amy's the baby of the family. Um, she's the one that everyone goes to for comfort. She's the one that has all the wise words to say. Her character is pretty much already grown before we even start the story. And Amy is, like I just said, she's the baby of the family. She is the selfish and shallow one. Um, at the beginning, she tends to be the least likable character of the four sisters, but I also feel that she had the most growth throughout this book. She really, you start off the book hating her and you get to the end and it's like, wow, you've turned into a really lovely person. Like, you really value yourself and others. Um, so it's, it's nice to see how much she does grow up, but, and that makes sense. She's also the youngest at the start of the novel. Lori is the prankster. He's the rebellious one. He cannot sit down and stay still. Um, and Marmy is the mother. She's loving. She's the teacher of the family. She's the one that really introduces the morals and values to her girls. So the young adult genre wasn't really a thing at the time that this book was written, so it was considered a children's book. I don't see this being a children's book today. I mean, maybe in the cut down version where you're you've only got a book that's like 100 pages. The original here is almost 500 pages, but it's hard to see it as a children's book because it's huge and they use big words and it's hard to think of a day, of a time in life when kids could actually read this, although maybe it was parents reading to kids. I don't know. I wasn't there in the 1800s. But it's definitely, if you're new to classics and don't know where to start, I would start with the children's classics because children's classics are advanced beyond our idea of children's books today, where they're like 10 pages with some illustrations. Um, but they're like the easiest classics to start that I've come across so far. This, this book was so easy. This one and The Little Princess would be really great starts for classics just because they're that easy to read. Um, I don't have much else to say. There's a great video on the movies. If I can find it again, I'll link it down below. It's talking about like the four main movies and what could each of these movies possibly have to add to the conversation around Little Women. And then it goes into how the new movie really focuses on feminism. And some of the older movies really focused on Joe's development or on money that was needed in the depression that people didn't have that much of. Like, each era with the movies just kind of brought its own piece to the story. So I will link that down below if I can find it. That is it from me. I have to get out of here and go take care of a rambunctious kitten. <laughs> so please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media, follow my cats on social media, um, I post every Wednesday, Sunday, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, friends!